There are a gajillion videos out there giving tips and tricks on how to query literary agents, but in this video I'm going to get into the nitty gritty details. What does this process look like? Organizing agents into a spreadsheet and navigating the web pages to query a few of them. I'm going to anonymize the names of individual agents, but not the agencies. I'm not sure if that's important. This is all publicly facing websites, but just in case that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to edit down the video length in the interest of time, but I'll show the total time it took me for each query. Query. First, briefly, where to find agents. I recommend going to blog.readsy.com and following their advice. You can browse a variety of directories, Readsy directory, query tracker, publisher marketplace. That one, there is a paid subscription fee and manuscript wish list. Search for key terms related to your manuscript. For mine, the current one that I'm working on, I searched for family and science fiction. I wanted to also use search terms for alcoholism and redemption because these are things that I deal with in my novel. Unfortunately, these search terms just didn't come up with any results. If you already know some comparable books in your genre, you can look at who represents those books or even search by those book titles in the agent's wish list. In short, compile a list of agents, preferably ranked in order of best fit to least fit, and organize them into some sort of spreadsheet. I supplemented my agent search with lists of agents copied from the querying spreadsheet sheets of writers I'm friends with who also write in my genre. Here's my organization. Section 1 includes agents I have already queried. I put in the agent's name, the agency they work at, the date I queried them, the date I was rejected, the interval between those dates, and any additional notes and website links that are relevant. It's important to include the agency because you're not supposed to query the same agency more than once. If there is more than one agent you like at the same agency, too bad determine the better fit and query that one. Of 33 agents queried thus far, I've heard back from 17 of them, 51%. My average response time was 42 days. The median response time was 22 days. The fastest response I ever got was in one day. The slowest response I ever got took 190 days and all of them were rejections. The next section of the spreadsheet contains agents that I did not query, agencies that I did not query and do not intend to query. Somehow these agencies made it onto my list and yet I found no mention of science fiction among any of their agents' interests, or there was some other reason to never query them. I put them here so that if I ever run across them again, I'll save myself the trouble of researching them. There are seven agencies so far listed in this section for me. Section three is for agents that are closed or otherwise pending. Many agents are not open to queries, usually because their backlog is full or they are otherwise busy serving their current clients. But if I think the agent is a good fit, they get listed here so I can double back to them at some point in the future. 36 agents are listed here in my spreadsheet, meaning that over 50% of the agents that I have wanted to query have been closed. This is one of the most frustrating aspects of this process to me. Imagine going out to eat and there's a 50% chance that any restaurant you show up to is closed. Not to mention the fact that there's a 99% chance the open restaurant will reject you for one reason or another. And finally, section four, agents and agencies I have yet to query. Once I got past about five agents who I thought were a really good fit, my ranking system was thrown out in favor of just a disorganized pile. So I just select an agent from this section at random and launch into a query. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I pick an agent and the first thing I do is search the whole spreadsheet for the agency where this agent works. Again, you're not supposed to query anyone at the same agency more than once for the same manuscript. So I use control F to search and I make sure I haven't already queried this agency. Next, I go to the agency's webpage and I look for a list of all their agents. I want to make sure that the agent I'm querying is the best fit at this agency. There are sometimes a lot of agents, so I start by searching for key terms. Since some people write SF, but others write out science fiction or sci-fi or speculative fiction or spec fic, I search for a few different terms. I search for SF, Sci, SCI, and Spec. Here I've narrowed down to two agents, both of whom mention sci-fi and family as interests. That's great for my story. This agent is closed to queries. That makes my decision easy. Pro tip, before getting together your query material for a particular agent, before beginning to write up a customized query for them, check to make sure that they are not closed. Go to the very bottom, go to their query tracker, search their webpage for the word closed or accepting, try to figure out if they're closed or not. I have wasted time writing up a customized query for agents who are not open. 
I spend a little more time checking around this agent's personal page and social media to see if I can establish a strong connection in my query letter, but unfortunately I haven't read any of the books this agent lists as favorites. I'm still going to try and query this agent. Next, I look at submission requirements. Some agents go through Query Tracker, many do email. This agency uses a web submission form. I read through the whole form first to see what they want. It's all things I've submitted before and I've got in my consolidated submission file. So I've got this Word document that I put up on Google Drive that contains my pitch, blurb, latest draft of my query letter template, and synopsis, and any other things that any agent has ever asked me for so that I can see what was the best version that I presented in the past, and I'll read through it one more time just see if I can tweak it, improve it just a little bit. One thing that I've not seen before that's asked for in this text field is why this agency? So I need to draft up a response to that. I took about 10 minutes writing a custom response and compiling all my inputs, so now I fill in the form and I hit submit. The web form eliminated any formatting, such as italics, from my manuscript. I had to copy and paste it into the text field as text. That's pretty typical. I just assume that they understand that that happens. There are many, many little obstacles such as this that you will run into when querying. And my best advice is just to do your best. Do your best to follow the guidelines, follow the rules, and submit the cleanest copy, the best version that you can put forward given all the constraints and little tripping hazards such as a web form eliminating all of your italics. Finally, the last step is to update my spreadsheet. I'm going to move this agent and their agency from the fourth section, the yet to be investigated, up to the already queried section at the top. The total time that I spent on this particular query, 30 minutes. Let's do another query. I am selecting these at random. I did not choose these ahead of time. So I pick an agency from my yet to be queried list and I'm gonna to navigate to their website and I'm gonna start there. And what I find is one of the most minimal web pages I have ever seen. In fact, as I search through this website, I can't find any information on the agents that work there, much less what the agents are interested in. Now, I briefly go and do a Google search and try and search for what agents work at this agency. I can only really find information on the person that the agency is named after. And when I go to his website, I can't find anything that suggests that he's interested in what I wrote. So very quickly, I simply move this agency and that one agent to the part of my spreadsheet that is do not bother. That is don't query this person, this agency, and don't try and research them in the future because it's a waste of time. I do include a note saying that I just simply couldn't find anything out about this agency so that if I run across an agent who seems like a good fit and this happens to be where they work, I would still query them. I mean, I wouldn't skip them just because their website doesn't have a lot of information on them if I can find that information elsewhere. But for now, it's not worth my time. I'm going to move on to somebody else. It took me a total of six minutes to go through this process. All right, third query. I search for the agency that this person is affiliated with. I don't find it anywhere else in my spreadsheet. So I go ahead and Google to get to that agency webpage. Now, what's weird about this one is that I don't find a webpage for this agency. I find a publisher's marketplace webpage. I find a query tracker webpage for this agent, but it seems like the agency doesn't have its own homepage, which is a bit strange. And I definitely take some time searching around to figure out if maybe I've Googled the wrong thing. I eventually end up on publisher's marketplace for this agent, and I can at least find out what this agent is interested in. Now, I read their profile and a lot of what it seems like they're interested in is just sort of describes good storytelling, good books, uh, which isn't very helpful. It's very generic. It's very general. Um, but I go under fiction. What genres are they interested in? I don't see science fiction. I don't see speculative fiction. So I'm feeling like I'm about to strike out on this one. By the way, though, if you scroll down on Publishers Marketplace, you can see comments from other authors who have queried this agent and sort of what their experience was. Usually it'll just be like whether or not they got a response and how long the response took. But you can find out some of that useful information. So it doesn't look like this agent is interested in the story that I wrote. And as far as I can tell, the agency is comprised of just this one person. So I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and I'm going to move this agent and this agency to the section that is do not contact with a little note saying that I couldn't find any other agents, but there might be somebody there. And if I find out later that I connect with some other agent at this agency, I should still contact them because I've not queried the agency yet. 
But as far as this is concerned, I'm moving on. It took me about five minutes to determine that this wasn't a fit for me. Moving on to the next agent. So same drill as usual. I first searched my spreadsheet to see if I've already queried this agency. I have not. So I go to the agency's webpage. Thankfully, things are a little bit more standard this time. They have a bunch of options at the top of the webpage. They have a pull down menu for their team. So I'm going to open up in a new tab each and every one of these team members' bios. And I'm going to read through them and see who is the best fit for my novel. Now, when I do that, I find that only one of them is really interested in science fiction. Uh, nobody else has it listed in their profile. So I'm going to read a little bit more closely on their profile to see if they're a good fit. What I find is that though science fiction is listed, it's listed under what they'd like to represent for young adult or middle grade books, not for adult books, which is the classification of my novel. It also says that this person is interested in women's fiction, fiction by black indigenous people of color, queer disabled authors. It's great that many agents want to represent historically underrepresented groups, but I don't fall into any of those categories. And so my really only connection with this agent is science fiction, and it's not even adult science fiction. This person lists it as an interest for YA and middle grade. So I don't think this is worth my time or their time querying. And since this is the only person at this whole agency that listed science fiction at all as an interest, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and move this agency into the do not contact, nobody here likes science fiction group. Determining that there was nobody that was a fit at this agency took me six minutes. All right, this is the last one I'm going to do on this video. So I'm already at the agency webpage, and I can't find a list of agents who work here. Now, the particular agent who was listed in my spreadsheet is a literary agent at a different agency. So I figure this is just a good opportunity to check both agencies, see if there's somebody who fits. Now, the first agency pictured right here, I can't find any agents at it. It seems to be another situation where maybe it is just the one agent runs this agency. And I did not find this individual was interested in science fiction. So I go back to my spreadsheet and I move them to the category of not interested. They're not interested in science fiction. When I search for the literary agent who's listed on my spreadsheet, I find this other agency. So their website is thankfully set up a little bit more standard fashion. I open up new tabs for each of the bios, the biographies of each of the literary agents who work here. And I search through all of them for any mention of science fiction. And I find two hits, the person who was in my spreadsheet and one other. With the list narrowed down to two, now's the time to dig deeper and read more carefully what they have to say, what they're interested in. And thankfully, they list really specific things. This is great. This is what you want, right? A lot of agents, too many agents, basically just say, oh, I'm into really good books with like great characters. Yeah, we know. Everybody's into great characters and great storytelling. This person says she is a sucker for quirk, mystery, small town hysteria, atmosphere, secrets, things that go bump in the night, and so on. Fantastic. Now, that's not necessarily what I wrote. Most of it's not what I wrote. It does apply. There are secrets. There's a dash of humor. Uh, atmosphere. I think those things are a fit, so I'm not feeling too bad. I mean, this is the best I have to go on with an agent, so now I'm just going to look at the other agent and see if they are a better fit. The other agent who is interested in science fiction says that she's always open to stories with compelling characters and emotionally involving plot lines. Now, that is kind of generic. That is sort of like saying, oh, I love good stories. Like, obviously, many good stories have those things, but I do feel that those are particularly among my strengths, compelling characters and emotionally involving plot lines. So I'm actually feeling like this person who was not originally in my spreadsheet is a better fit at this agency. So next I need to figure out how to submit to this person. So I click on the submissions link for the agency. There's a lot of very standard stuff here that you'll see at almost all literary agencies. For example, please only query one project at a time unless otherwise requested. I do take that to mean one project at a time to this agency. They say, please submit your material as a Word document or PDF attachment. I do find that a little bit curious. Usually that is not how they ask for it. Usually it's just text pasted into the body of an email or a web form. Although that is in the sentence that says, if we request the material. So that's only if they ask you for your whole manuscript. They say, please only submit to one agent at a time. I believe they mean one agent at a time at this agency. That's very typical. In fact, it's irregular, the last part, that if one of the agents does pass on your material, you should submit to a different one. Typically, that's not how it is. It's usually a one-time go at the entire agency for a single manuscript. 
And then on this same page, they have all their agents, they have a brief bio for each of them, and the very first thing after their name is whether or not they're open to submission, and unfortunately, this agent is closed to submissions. A little bit more searching around, and I find on another of their web pages that it says they're gonna open up again in January of 2025. So I move this person into the section of my spreadsheet that is, they're currently closed, but I would like to reach out to them in the future. And I could also write a note about when they say that they're opening up, and perhaps also put that in my calendar as a reminder. It took me 12 minutes to determine that although this person is a good fit, uh, they're not open currently. That is something that you could check right away. If you look at the person's Twitter bio, a lot of times that will be most up to date. You can't necessarily trust the agency webpage because those don't always get updated very frequently. But things like Query Tracker, Query Manager, and then their Twitter bio, those are easier to update. So those are usually up to date. I feel like this is a very good and representative spread of my querying experience, right? So one query I was able to put together in 30 minutes and I did find someone who fit. One agency that I searched for, although this agent is a good fit, they're close to queries and two or three others where it's just I either can't navigate the web pages, I can't find anybody who's interested, that sort of thing, and I just eliminate them from my search. So I hope this has been helpful to folks. I think it's different from other YouTube videos on this topic that I've seen. Uh, this is my querying experience. I'd be very interested to hear other folks' experiences. Whether you have a different approach to querying or if you have some tips or advice for me, I would love to hear it in the comments. But that's all for now for this video. Good luck out there. It is a tough process. Persevere, hang in there. You can do it.